Hi! Today I will be playing through the jump in order to honor Miniclip Legacy. This game was made for the website stand per day, whereas by now the website is 22 years old and focuses solely on mobile games. The goal of the game is to showcase some of the masterpieces originally made available on Miniclip. The character which we are aiming in its way up is the depiction of any average Miniclip player. The game itself is pretty simple, we just have to keep our balloon filled with air so we can bounce up our character. So, to spice it up I'll be adding some footage of the games presented by the Time Machines. First up, it's Candy and Clyde. Here, you'll be either helping Candy making the world a better place, or being a menace to everything with Clyde. Your goal is to complete different tasks as fast as you can. While the game does start out pretty easy, it gets progressively harder as you go on. Moreover, the difficulty of the tasks also depend on who are you doing it with. In this one, you just have to squash bugs with a few well times kicks on the ground. Next up is one of my favorites, match. Now tell me that the best way to match cards isn't lighting them on fire with a match till they all match with the composition of air. Very funny, I know, I know. Okay, next up it's polar jump. There's honestly not much to say about this one. You just have to keep clicking the polar bear to send it flying and pick up some power-ups to make things faster. Oh, what's that on the top right corner? Will that be the subscribe button? I wonder what happens if you press it like that. But back to the game. Eventually, you can even reach space at around 2500 meters. By the way, it gets plenty of hard to keep clicking on that bear as it builds up speed. So the trembling power felt real great for that 1.6 seconds till I wasted it. This game segment was way too long and a lot of things to say, but thankfully we're moving on to Monkey Lander. In this one you need to collect fruits with a funky little spaceship and land safely afterwards. Thankfully fuel won't be a problem in the earlier levels, nevertheless the game is still quite challenging because you need to land the ship very gently and because of its slippery controls. You get points according to how much fruits you collect, how many lives you have left and how much fuel you save. I remember struggling hard in this game when I was small because I kept landing too hard on the escape pad. But since then I grew quite a lot. That's enough rambling around, next up we're playing Acid Factory. Here you need to collect batteries without getting doubled up by monsters. In the first few levels you can't really defend yourself, you either dodge them or hop over them, whereas later on you'll get a laser gun. This game has its own unique vibe, I struggled to compare it to anything ghastly, and the creator clearly paid attention to the details, I mean look at the background of this level, it's so well decorated. Moreover, these levels also have a time limit, which is dictated by your remaining air. Once you collect all of the batteries, the exit opens and you can leave. At the end of each level, the game calculates bonus points, based on your air and HP bar. Additionally, the game tallies up your points at the end of the last level. The next in line is 3 Foot Ninja. You may wanna pay attention to the jump as well here, cause I got way too close for comfort to dying. By the way, the character in Deca Jump looks like it's from 3 Foot Ninja 2, but the title says 3 Foot Ninja 1, so I stick to that. Before I rocket myself out of this section, let's talk about the features of the game. You can swing your sword, jab your sword, throw stars, flip and block. But the only thing you need is jabbing your sword while walking towards the enemy, and you can defeat like 90% of the enemies. Coming right up, it's Commando. This game has many insanely successful sequels, and they were a key figures in my childhood. These games are filled with action, moreover it features many guns and enemies to destroy. At your disposal you have a knife, a pistol and bombs. Plus whatever the enemies drop ranging from machine guns to different kinds of rocket launchers. Also the explosions are so damn satisfying. By destroying crates you can find ammo, health and collectibles, which give you points for those who enjoy numbers going higher. The goal of tactic in this game is destroying the enemies before they can start attacking. And when that doesn't work, then spray and pray it is. And that's about it. Next up, it's Echno's Energizer. This is a pretty simplistic puzzle game where you have to transport that round shaped object, which I can only assume is a battery to the exit with your goofy looking character. This game also features a score system, because of course it does. If I didn't see numbers going up for a few minutes, I would go insane. You get points for your remaining time and for destroying stuff, like enemies. It also features a code based checkpoint system where you get a code for each completed level which you can type in to start from that level. Next up it's not really a game but a tool to create your own animations called Sketch Star. It got plenty of features, not enough to become complex but plenty to create pretty much anything you'd like with a bit of dedication. 
Although my drawing skills can't allow anything more complex than a 3 year old masterpiece. I mean look at those narrow lines I used for the detail and the highly advanced background which took me months to come up with. Isn't it gorgeous? In my honest opinion it's the most unique form of art I have ever seen. With that painful segment out of the way, coming up next is Wheel of Salvation. The first thing that comes to mind is the music of this game, it really hits that Indiana Jones kind of vibe. Your objective is to jump out of the cave by hopping from one wheel to another before the rising lava gets you. As you can see there are some differently colored specs of which you can collect, the shinier ones even grant you some power ups. In case you missed it, Wheel of Salvation also features points, you get 10 for each completed level, 1 for collecting yellow, 2 for collecting orange and 3 for collecting blue specs. Later on the levels get quite difficult, with very small wheels to jump on and huge potential falls, reminiscent of the Shovel Knight games. Jumping right up, it's Gravity Guy. This is quite a simple endless runner, where you dodge obstacles by flipping gravity on its head and back. As far as I know, the only ways to lose is to fall out of the world or getting stuck long enough to get caught. The game scrolls faster and faster until you hit a checkpoint and features speed boosters, which greatly increase the game's difficulty, but also makes it more satisfying. Moreover, the soundtrack really fits well with the theme of the game. Actually, the levels aren't procedurally generated, which means that the game must certainly have an end. And now, after 4 seconds of research, I found that yes, it does have an end, plus multiple chapters, this being the first one. Although, I'm not sure whether the other chapters are available for the Flash version, or is it mobile version only. I pretty much thought about every aspect of the game. But we still haven't arrived to the next chapter, so did you know that the game has a pause menu? Never mind, we're thankfully moving on to Robo Rampage. If you've been on this channel, I probably don't have to explain what this game is about, but just in case I will. You just have to shoot down different kind of robots with your four types of weapons, climbing higher and higher through their remains. I ended up locking out in Deca Jump with two red rockets, cutting this section quite short. Next up we're playing Obama Alien Defense. This is a pretty long game with multiple weapons, many hard to get collectibles and a score system for when I have nothing more interesting to talk about. Moreover, the game features just enough alien types to keep the game refreshing. All in all, this is a very well made and polished video game. I will play through it if there is demand for it. And now, at last, we have a section dedicated to the founders of Miniclip itself. In the background you can see how the Miniclip website looks now since they focus on mobile games. An interesting thing to look back on is how the coin spawn rate changed as we progressed in Deca Jump. Now they can spawn in huge rectangular blobs. This game was great to remind us of the old stars of the internet. And now, with two more green rockets, I should be able to finish this game. And there it is, 2011, the year this game was made. It's been a few years, eh? If you missed the old website, boy do I have something for you. Would you look at that? I plan on playing quite a few flash games from Eclipse, so see you in the next one.